Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, please be sure to hit that sub button, hit that notification bell so you're not missing any of the content that we have coming out. And today, we're going to be diving in to The Flash, issue number 766. Now if you guys have not been keeping up with this, please be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description and at the top of this video. It'll give you a link to the playlist. You can find out everything Flash related, get completely caught up to where we are right now with this new writer since Joshua Williamson is no longer doing it. Kevin Shinnick is, is now the writer for The Flash. And he's been doing this run with Dr. Alchemy. And it's really, I gotta say, it's really interesting. And I've really started to appreciate it. I, I think uh, Kevin Shinnick is do gonna do a, a phenomenal job moving forward with The Flash. Will Conrad, the artist, I, I, I definitely have to point out his artwork for The Flash and drawing The Flash. He really does a phenomenal job. And I really, really am liking what I'm seeing moving forward. So without further ado, let's dive into this issue so diving into this issue barry allen is pretty much telling us you know throughout history there there's been huge discoveries of uranium but it was used for uh, you know to help make the atomic bomb there was the discover of hydrogen but it was used to to create a weapon of mass destruction and his name is barry allen and he created an element known as light lysanthium and now Dr. Alchemy is using that element to possess the power of the Philosopher's Stone without needing the relic itself. And so that makes him one of the most dangerous individuals to ever exist. And we're seeing these two duke it out. And as they're fighting, Dr. Alchemy is switching between the personalities of the individuals that have, that have possessed the stone at some point in time in history. And so all the personalities keep switching back and forth. And finally, the, the most recent iteration of Dr. Alchemy, Desmond, pops up to the surface and tells Barry that he needs to run. And that the only way that he can defeat all, uh, all of his other personalities is to recreate the Philosopher's Stone. And Barry, not sure if he can trust him, he just, he tells Barry, like, you, you can't trust me, you don't know if you can, but what choice do you have? And then Dr. Alchemy takes off. Now, picking back up at the Hall of Justice, we have Jon Stewart using the Green Lantern Ring to take out the, the implants that Axel had put into Barry Allen's eyes to be able to track his movements and so on and so forth. Like, this te technology is so sophisticated, Barry Allen didn't even see it implanted as a contact into his eye. And so Barry, Barry's like, you know, I need to go talk to someone. And so he goes and talks to Will Magnus. And so they have a discussion about recreating the Philosopher's Stone. And while he didn't actually create a Philosopher's Stone, he merely took the idea from his ancestors and used it to give life to the elements. And he tells Barry that he can't guarantee that he won't be affected by the stone. And if he chose to create one, his advice would to be to not actually use it. Because once the holder wields the stone, they are forever bound to it. And Barry lets him know, like, he's already created the stone. And he's hoping that the Lysinium additive, the stone now won't be able to allow the previous users to control the current wielder. And this is where Iris is really questioning what he's doing. It's like, you know, you're doing all of this based on Dr. Alchemy's advice, but you don't even know if you could trust him. So you could easily go under Dr. Alchemy's control, you know? And she also thinks that, you know, he's trying to prove that he's the better alchemist, that he's the better chemist, that he can do better than Desmond could. And as Barry makes his way through the city, he sees the rivers turn to gold. The buildings look like a, a psychedelic painting. And as he's making his way through, a cloud comes crashing out of the sky that's been turned to bronze and smashes down on top of the Flash. And Dr. Alchemy arises. And these two start duking it out. And as Barry's getting close to, to winning this fight, the other personalities push Desmond to the front again. And every time that he looks close to winning, they do this to, to appeal to Barry Allen's hero side of him. And he lets him know, like, I've created the stone. And he tells them to use it. There's no other choice. You have to use it right now. And so he, he goes to use it. And when he does, Desmond reveals that it's all been a trick. They, in fact, he's been controlling all of the personalities the entire time. And he just wanted Barry Allen to use the stone 
so that he would become under the influence of the stone and at the same time under the influence of Dr. Alchemy. And he makes Barry Allen bow to him. And with Barry Allen on his knees, he remembers. He remembers that he listened to Iris. Both Alchemy and him are using Lysinium to protect themselves from the Philosopher's Stone. He uses it to stop the stone from taking over his body. So it occurred to Barry that it could be possible to block the stone from taking over someone's mind. And he, he goes on to say his greatest scientific contribution isn't creating Lysinium. It's finding a way to dissolve it using rapid friction. It'll leave alchemy a punt to all the stone's properties. And it works. The Philosopher's Stone is not just magic. It's also part amino acid urate. It's also uric acid and a touch of calcium exoxalate. Because at the end of the day, the Philosopher's Stone is just that. It's a stone, and anyone looking to absorb its properties will end up as such. And so we see Dr. Alchemy turned to stone. And this obviously wasn't the outcome that Barry Allen wanted, but he has no other choice. He had to turn him to stone, and maybe this is, this is a, a bitter irony for Dr. Alchemy, because he reached for immortality so desperately... And what is he not, if, if not a mortal, in the in this statue rock form? And so he's transported to Iron Heights until Barry can find a cure. And, and seeing Dr. Alchemy like that is a reminder to himself. Creating a Philosopher's Stone might be a, a great achievement for a chemist, but finding a way to help Desmond to commit to, to saving a human being is the greatest achievement for a hero. And Barry had lost sight of that for a moment, but he promises himself that it's never going to happen again, no matter how fast he's going. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I really did enjoy this. This was a four-part four part story arc that, that's pretty much bringing the Flash back down to Earth in a metaphorical sense. You know, he, he's been going so fast and so hard for so long that, that he's forgetting the little things in, in that make him a hero. You know, he may be able to create a Philosopher's Stone, become the best chemist in the world, but at the end of the day, he's a hero that wants to save people by any means possible. Even his greatest villains, he, he wants to help them and save them in some kind of way. So I really have to say, you know, Kevin Shinnick is, is killing it in the writing. Like, this made me really enjoy reading The Flash and wanting wanting more wanting more story that is like this now we're probably going to be taking a break because we have dc's uh event coming up which is endless winter and we definitely are going to be covering that here at this channel so make sure you're subscribed make sure you hit that notification bell because we are definitely going to be covering everything Endless Winter related. If you guys have not yet, please make sure you're liking this video. If you're enjoying the content that we have coming out. And until the next video, 